Hello and welcome dear viewers to this program. Today we will discuss about translation. Translation is simply the decoding of nucleotide sequences on mRNA into the amino acid sequences of a polypeptide. The process of translation that is the synthesis of a polypeptide chain can be divided into three rather distinct activities. A. Initiation which involves binding of ribosomal subunits with messenger RNA accompanied with transfer RNA charged with methionine. B. Elongation in which successive amino acylated transfer RNA molecules are brought sequentially on the ribosomes that is translating the messenger RNA molecule and the formation of peptide bond between the successive amino acids and C. Termination where the ribosomal units dissociate into the individual units and the synthesized polypeptide chain is released. Proteins are the workhorse of the cell controlling virtually every reaction within a cell as well as providing structure to the cell and serving as signals to other cells. They are long chains of amino acids and it is the sequence of amino acids that determines the final structure and function of the protein. Instructions for that sequence of amino acids in a polypeptide or proteins are encoded in genes or we can say on DNA. We know since of every protein molecule in a cell is directed by an mRNA originally copied from DNA. Therefore, synthesis of mRNA is primary requirement for translation. This synthesis of RNA that is mRNA from DNA template is called transcription and the process is catalyzed by an enzyme called RNA polymerase. Next step is the synthesis of polypeptide that is proteins from mRNA which we call translation. Synthesis of a polypeptide from mRNA includes two types of processes. One information transfer process in which the mRNA base sequence determines an amino acid sequence and two chemical process in which the amino acids are linked together. The complete series of events is called translation. Translation in a simple language can be defined as the process by which amino acid sequence of polypeptide is synthesized on a ribosomal complex according to the nucleotide sequence of an mRNA molecule. Before discussing the process of translation, let us describe some ingredients necessary for translation. The main ingredients of translation are mRNA, ribosomes, transfer RNA, amino acids and amino acyl synthetase enzymes. Messenger RNA is an RNA molecule that serves as a template for protein synthesis. It is needed to bring the ribosomal subunits together and to provide the coding sequence of bases that determines the amino acid sequence in the resulting polypeptide chain. The whole information regarding the polypeptide is coded in it and it is decoded during translation. Ribosomes. Ribosomes are the sites of protein synthesis that is translation in both prokaryotes and eukaryotes. They move along an mRNA molecule and expose codons for appropriate amino acyl transfer RNA molecules as per genetic code. The amino acids are added to the growing polypeptide chain one by one and the peptide bond formation is catalyzed by ribosomal RNA of small subunit of ribosome. In prokaryotes, translation occurs on 70S ribosomes, whereas in eukaryotes it occurs on 80S ribosomes except in mitochondria and chloroplasts. The general structure of prokaryotic and eukaryotic ribosome is similar, although they differ in size. 
the small subunit of prokaryotes designated as 30s consists of the 16s ribosomal rna and 21 proteins and the large subunit designated as 50s is composed of the 23s 5s ribosomal rna and 34 proteins the subunits of eukaryotic ribosomes are larger and contain more proteins than their prokaryotic counterparts have the small subunit of eukaryotic ribosome designated as 40s is composed of 18s ribosomal rna and approximately 30 proteins and the larger subunit designated as 60s consists of 28s 5.8s and 5s ribosomal rna and about 45 proteins transfer rna the sequence of amino acids in a polypeptide is determined by the base sequence in the messenger rna by means of a set of adapter molecules known as transfer rna the transfer rna or trna binds to the mrna codons through anticodon site which contains three complementary bases to the codons and thus binds amino acids adjacent to one another for the formation of peptide bond the codons is simply a group of three adjacent bases on mrna the transfer RNAs are approximately 70 to 80 nucleotides long and have characteristic clover leaf like structure as shown in the figure. That results from the base pairing between the different complementary regions within the molecule. All the transfer RNA molecules have sequence CCA at their 3 dash terminus and amino acids are covalently attached to the ribose of the terminal A of CCA. They also have anticodon loop at their other end with which uh, transfer RNA pairs with codons. One DHU loop, a pseudo uridine loop and an extra arm or variable loop of 7 to 10 nucleotides. X-ray diffraction analysis have shown that the transfer RNAs are made up of two double helices arranged in the shape of an L. Amino acids The pool of 20 amino acids is used in the synthesis of polypeptides or proteins. Amino acid transfer RNA synthase this set of enzymes catalyzes the attachment of each amino acid to its corresponding transfer RNA molecule. A transfer RNA molecule attaches to its amino acid is called an amino acylated tRNA or charged tRNA. The formation of charged tRNA occurs in two steps. Number one, activation of amino acids. This reaction is brought about by binding of an amino acid with the ATP and is mediated by a specific amino acid transfer RNA synthetase. As a result of this, a complex known as amino acid AMP enzyme complex is formed. Number 2. Charging of an amino acid on transfer RNA. The Amino acid AMP enzyme complex reacts with a transfer RNA means tRNA and transfers the amino acid to tRNA accompanied with the release of an AMP and the enzyme. The charging of tRNA is highly specific. The synthesis of a polypeptide which we also call translation is a continuous process. But for the sake of simplicity, it is divided into three distinct steps. Number one, initiation, number two, elongation, and number three, termination. Initiation. The main feature of the initiation is the binding of an mRNA molecule to the small subunit of ribosome transfer RNA charged with formulated methionine 
followed by the large ribosomal subunit to form the insertion complex. The ribosome have three sites for tRNA molecules. These are E or exit site from which the uncharged transfer RNA leave during elongation, P or peptidyl site where the transfer RNA loaded with the polypeptide is associated with the ribosomes and an A or amino acyl site where new charged tRNA joins during elongation. The initiation proceeds with the binding of the 30S subunit with the initiation factor IF1 and IF3. The IF3 prevents the 30S and 50S subunits from combining prematurely. Factor IF1 binds at the A site during initiation. The mRNA then binds to the 30S subunit in such a way that the initiation AUG codon is positioned at the P site of ribosome. Bacterial mRNA possesses a specific sequence of nucleotides called the shine dalgirno sequence named after its discoverer that resides 5 to 10 nucleotides before the initiation codon. The shine dalgirno sequence is complementary to a sequence of nucleotides near the 3 dash end of the 16S or RNA of small ribosomal subunit. It is pairing between complementary bases of shine dalgirno sequence and 16S or RNA that positions AUG codon at P site of ribosome. The initiation complex consisting of the 30S ribosomal subunit IF3, IF1 and mRNA is joined by both GTP bound IF2 and initiating transfer RNA charged with formulated methionine. The anticodon of this tRNA pairs with the initiation codon of mRNA. It should be noted that only the first charged tRNA binds with the P site. All the other successively added tRNAs attaches at the A site of ribosomes. This is followed by joining of 50S ribosomal subunit, but at this setup GTP bound to IF2 is hydrolyzed to GDP and inorganic phosphate, which are released from the complex. All the three initiation factors depart from the ribosome at this point. At the completion of this process, a functional 70S ribosome called the initiation complex is formed. Initiation in eukaryotes proceeds in similar way as in prokaryotes that is binding of small subunit designated as 40S with the mRNA followed by joining of charged tRNA and then larger subunit designated as 60S to form the initiation complex. But initiation in eukaryotes requires at least 10 initiation factors designated as EIFS means eukaryotic initiation factors which makes initiation in eukaryotes more complex. Number 2 Elongation After the initiation complex has been formed, translation proceeds by elongation of the polypeptide chain. The ribosome has three sites for tRNA binding designated as E site, P site and A site as mentioned earlier. The initiator formulated methionine tRNA is bound at the P site. The first setup in elongation is binding of the next charged tRNA to the A site by pairing with the second codon of the mRNA. The amino acyl tRNA is escorted into the A site of the ribosome by an elongation factor EFTU which is complexed with GTP. The GTP is hydrolyzed 
to GDP as the correct amino acid tRNA is inserted into the A site of the ribosome. And the elongation factor bound to GDP is released. The hydrolysis of GTP in elongation is the rate limiting setup and provides the time interval during which an incorrect amino acyl tRNA can dissociate from the ribosome rather than being used in the formation of a polypeptide. The expenditure of a high energy GTP at this setup has an important contribution to accurate protein synthesis. It allows time for proofreading of the codon anticodon pairing before the peptide bond forms. Once EFTU has left the ribosome, a peptide bond is formed between the amino acids attached with the tRNA on A site and P site. This reaction is catalyzed by the large ribosomal subunit with RNA playing a critical role. The result is the transfer of the first amino acid at P site to the amino acyl tRNA at the A site of the ribosome, forming a dipeptide tRNA at this position and leaving the uncharged initiator tRNA at the P site. The next step in elongation is translocation, which requires another elongation factor known as translocase or EFG and is again coupled to GTP hydrolysis. During translocation, the ribosomes move three nucleotides along the M RNA in 5 dash 3 dash direction at E setup, positioning the next codon in an MPT A site. The binding of a new amino acyl tRNA to the A site then induces the release of the uncharged deacylated tRNA from the E site into the cytosol. At E setup of translocation, Newer and newer amino acyl tRNA attaches at the A site and uncharged tRNA are exited through the E site as the ribosomes move from codon to codon along the mRNA towards the 3 dash end. For maintaining the continuity in the process of elongation, the EFTU GDP that is released from the ribosome must be reconverted to its GTP form. This conversion requires a third elongation factor EFTS, which binds to EFTU GDP complex and promotes the exchange of bound GDP for GTP. This exchange results in the regeneration of EFTU GTP, which is now ready to escort a new amino acyl tRNA in the A site of the ribosome, beginning a new cycle of elongation. When we look at the elongation cycle in eukaryotes, it is quite similar to that of prokaryotes. But instead of the three elongation factors EFTU, EFTS and EFG, there are EEF1 alpha. EEF1 beta gamma and EEF2 respectively. These factors in eukaryotes are analogs to prokaryotic elongation factors. Further, eukaryotic ribosomes do not have E site, so uncharged tRNA are expelled directly from the P site. Termination Elongation of a polypeptide continues until a setup codon, also called nonsense codon or termination codon, is translocated into the A site of the ribosome. There are three nonsense or termination codons in both prokaryotes and eukaryotes. These are UAA, UAG, and UGA. Cells do not contain tRNA anticodons complementary to these terminating signals. 
instead they have release factors that recognize the signals and terminate protein synthesis the release factors have domains thought to mimic the structure of trna prokaryotic cells contain two release factors that recognize termination codon rf1 recognizes uaa or uag and rf2 recognizes uaa or uga in eukaryotes a single releasing factor erf1 eukaryotic releasing factor 1 recognizes all the three termination codons the release factors bind to the termination codon at the a site and stimulate hydrolysis of bond between trna and polypeptide chain at the p site thus resulting in the release of polypeptide from the ribosome the prokaryotic cells contain another release factor rf3 that do not recognize specific termination codon but act together with rf1 and rf2 and is thought to dissociate the ribosomes into the subunits the rf3 has also been reported in eukaryotes in both prokaryotic and eukaryotic cells particularly in metabolically active cells it has been reported that a single mrna can be translated simultaneously by several ribosomes as one ribosome moves from the initiation site another one can bind to the mrna and begins synthesis of a new polypeptide chain such a condition is known as polysome all polyribosome this type of translation helps the cell to amplify the specific protein and meet the excessive demand of the protein within or outside the cell this is all we have in this program thank you